Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be running through uh, double replacement reaction sketches in uh, limiting reactant problems and BCA tables. These are two areas that some people definitely need to uh, keep reinforcing. Uh, and in the second half I'll apply these to the new concept you learned, which is molarity stoichiometry. So starting with uh, an example not with molarity stoic, here we have a solution with 42.3 grams of lead 2 nitrate is added to a solution containing 14.1 grams of aluminum sulfate. So we're looking for a BCA table and a sketch. So what's the first thing we do? Well, we need a balanced equation. So I've done this already. You can see the balanced equation here. I like to rewrite my coefficients below, 3, 1, 3, 2. And on the left side, we say BCA, which stands for before, change, and after. Now we need to fill in the moles we have of all four of these terms before the reaction takes place. So what are we given in this problem? Well, we're given grams of lead 2 nitrate, and we're given grams of aluminum sulfate. So when you're given grams, you guys have been through this 100 times, convert them into moles. So I've done the work on this already here. You can see we use a molar mass here uh, to get 0.128 moles of the lead 2 nitrate. So that's going to fill in below the lead 2 nitrate, 0 0.128. And the unit here is moles. And we do the same thing for aluminum sulfate. We get 0 0.0412 moles of aluminum sulfate, 0 0.0412 moles. How much of these products do we have before the reaction takes place? Well, we have none of this and none of this. All right, C is change, which is uh, how much of these reactants on the left are going to go away and how much of these products on the right are going to form. So what do we need to determine? Well, next is finding the limiting reactant because that's the one that's going to be fully depleted. So you take your moles divided by the coefficient. Um, so for this one here, we have uh, 0.0412 over 1 is just that same number. And here we have 0.128 divided by 3 which my calculator tells me is 0 0.0427. Let's confirm I got this number right. Yep, 0.0427. So what's bigger, 0.0412 or 0.0427? Well, this one, oh, sorry, this one's bigger. So we're going to take a smaller number and make that the limiting reactant. So this becomes my LR. And this is my ER, excess reactant. Okay, so the limiting reactant is uh, the one that gets fully depleted. So the change here is going to be minus all of it, 0 0.0412, leaving us with 0. How much of the excess re reactant is going to react? Well, not this whole amount. Notice the mole ratio. We have a 1 to 3 mole ratio. So that one to three mole ratio is going to apply right here. Let's get rid of this. So how do we do that? Well, we take our calculator and we say 0 0.0412 times three, which gives us 0.1236 with three sig figs is 0.124. And that's gonna be subtracted minus 0 0.124. So you can see we have just barely a tiny bit of this left. How much is left? Just 0 0.004, 0 0.004. So you do the subtraction there. Now I'm not gonna purposely add zeros at the end for sig figs because when we subtract, we don't care about sig figs, we care about decimal places. So I have three decimal places here, three here, and three here is correct. All right, on the right side, we have um, a three and a two as our coefficient. So what you want to do is look for like nice easy shortcuts to fill those in. Well, here's one nice shortcut I see. Notice I have a three here and a three here. So however much reacted on this side is the same amount that's going to react on this side. Notice I'm not going to pull this number, the 0.128, and I'm not going to pull this number, that's a 0.004. I'm going to pull a change value and apply the three to three mole ratio and form, so plus 0 0.124. That's going to leave us with 0 0.124 because I added 0 plus that. Let's get rid of that one. Not there. Okay. 
finally, I have a 2 here. Now, I have options. I can take this number and apply a 3 to 2 ratio by dividing by 1.5, or I can take this number and apply a 1 to 2 ratio by doubling it. And go ahead and do that, because I could even do that in my head. 0 0.0412, if you double that, it's going to give you 824. So we're going to say plus 0. Point, don't forget the 0, 824, leaving us with 0. 0.08. Two four moles. So that's our BCA table. Notice three sig figs throughout, except for when we subtract here, we're left with just the one sig fig. All right, next thing we're looking for is a sketch. So what I've done is I've put our balanced equation there just for reference. So up until this point, you guys should have plenty of experience sketching these. So in the left beaker, we're going to have my PB2 plus ion and an NO3 minus ion. Second beaker, we have an aluminum Al3 plus ion and a sulfate ion. And in the final beaker, I have a solid precipitate that settled at the bottom, PbSO4, that's written together, not split up. I like to put the line there to show that it's like a solid that is settled. And above that, I have my aluminum 3 plus and my nitrate NO3 minus, which comes from my aqueous product here. Now, um, you would just add your waters. But in a limiting reactant problem, you have to add one more thing here. You have to remember that you have an excess reactant. Now in our reaction before, my LR was this one and my ER was this one. So because we still had excess lead to nitrate aqueous solution uh, that is unreacted, that's gonna be present in this beaker here. This is called the supernatant, the liquid above it. So we need to make sure that we have lead to nitrate here. Now one of them is always gonna be there, in this case nitrate. And why is, always, why is one always going to be there? Because your aqueous product is always going to have one of those ions. So you need to add the missing ion. And in this case, what's the missing ion? It's the lead. It's this lead right here is missing. So we're going to add a PB2 plus. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, 2 plus. And what we're not going to add is this sulfate. In fact, all of the sulfate is now locked up down here. And it makes sense because what would happen if sulfate were in this? Well, the lead 2 plus would find the sulfate 2 minus and form more solid. So this is our final beaker here. Now all we need to do is add our waters. Some of these waters like this. You guys know the deal by now. Quickly. Went towards the positive and away from the negative as best you can. So that's how we sketch double replacements with limiting reactant. Uh, in short, you add the excess reactant. All right, let me quickly run through one more here. This is a molarity stoichiometry problem. Now what's different? Notice, I didn't give you grams, I gave you volume and molarity of barium chloride solution. I didn't say the word solution, but anytime you're given molarity, it's implied that it's a solution. And I also gave you the volume and the molarity of the ammonium phosphate. So we're gonna complete a BCA table, which means we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with a balanced equation you can see here. 3, 2, 1, 6, and we're going to say B, C, A. And we start by filling in our moles. Well, remember, I didn't give you grams, so how are we going to get moles? Well, remember, molarity, capital M, equals N over L, which is moles. Sometimes I, I prefer to write this as capital M equals moles per liter. Now, how do we solve for moles? Well, you just do a little bit of algebra here. How do I get moles by itself? You need to get the divided by L out of there, so you multiply both sides. So in short, moles are going to equal molarity times liters. In fact, I prefer doing these because you don't even need a molar mass, which you know takes a lot of time. All you do is get your molarity and multiply by the liters. Now, very important here, it's not whatever volume unit you want. It has to be liters. All right, so let's work through how we find this. So there's what I just wrote before. Now notice. I didn't give you liters, I gave you milliliters. So for the first one, it's 15.2 milliliters. To get it to liters, you divide it by a thousand, which gives you this. Now there is kind of a shortcut you can use if you remember this properly, which is to sweep the decimal point three times to the left. So notice in the second one, I have 22.4 milliliters. I go one, two, three times, and it's 0 0.0224 liters. So whether you divide it by 1,000 or sweep it three times to the left, you get yourself the liters. And now that we have liters, we can multiply that by molarity and find our moles. So here's what I did on this slide. 
For the first one, I took the liters from the last slide, multiplied it by the molarity, and notice instead of capital M, I actually call this moles per liter, just so you can see the units. Liter cancels liter, we're left with 0 .011, uh, 0133 moles of barium chloride. Do the same thing down here, 0 0.0224 liters times the molarity gives us 0 0.0125 moles of ammonium phosphate. So 0 0.0133, 0 0.0125. I'm going to add those to my BCA table now. 0 0.0133 and 0 0.0125. Let me just make sure I got those right. Yes. Okay. And now you're back in familiar territory. It's just like a normal stoichiometry problem. Again, the only difference is instead of us giving you grams, we give you molarity in liters or milliliters, and you find moles that way. So we have none of this and we have none of this. What do we do now? We need to find the limiting reactant. So we go 0 0.0125 divided by 2, which is 0 0.00625. Then I'm going to take my 0 0.03. 0133, divide that by 3, which gives us 0 0.00443. So what is smaller, 0 0.006 or 0 0.004? Well, it's this one, which makes this my LR limiting reactant and this my ER excess reactant. Okay, so which of these gets depleted? The LR. So we're going to say minus 0 0.0133 leaving us with none of that. Three to two mole ratio. Three to two. How do you do that? Well, you could cross multiply. You could basically multiply by two and then divide by three, or you could just divide by 1.5. So I'm going to say 0 0.0133 divided by 1.5 gives me 0 0.00887. 0 oops let me get my color correct come on there we go green okay 0 0.00887 and that is being subtracted so we do the subtraction here 0 0.0125 minus 0 0.00887 and with four decimal places, one, two, three, four, I'm going to write 0 0.0036. That's how many moles we have. All right, over on the right side, we have a one and a six. Let's do the one first. So I have options here. I can apply a two to one ratio, divide that by two, or a three to one ratio, divide that by three. Either one will get you the same number, and it's going to be formed. So I'll take my point zero zero eight eight seven. I'm going to divide that by two to apply the two to one mole ratio, which gives me zero point zero zero four 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 moles. Four four three five. I called it four four four, meaning we get zero point zero zero four 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 moles. And finally, we have a six. And here we have three options. You can take this number and multiply it by six. You can take this number and multiply it by three. You can take this number and multiply it by two. They'll all get you the same number. Let me just grab this most recent one, 0 0.00444 times six with three six figs gives me plus 0 0.0266. Plus 0 0.0266 moles. That is my BCA table for this. Last thing we do is sketch our reaction. There we go. So I have barium ions, Ba2 plus, and chloride ions, Cl minus. I have ammonium, I have phosphate. I have solid, Ba3, parentheses, PO4, close parentheses, 2, solid at the bottom of my beaker. And I have ammonium chloride, which is NH4 plus and Cl minus. So this being a limiting reactant problem, we have to add the excess. So if you recall, this one was my LR. This one was my ER. Let me just confirm that. Yes. 
So what's the final ion that's missing here? Take a second, think about it. What's missing? So you need to make sure that you have ammonium and phosphate floating around, which I do now. So you add phosphate, and now all we got to do is put some waters in there, and we're good to go. So as always, be sure to join your teacher in a video conference to go over any questions you have. Um, you have uh, basically one question similar to the ones we did here, and then you have um, a U Texas, a couple U Texas to do. Okay, so good luck, everyone.